right, we are back another week with a 3 a.m. Coney. I don't know what number we're on here, Lucas. I gotta, we should probably check that out. We numbered like the first seven and then we kind of stopped. Um, we're up to maybe what 15 or something now. Well, you know, with the sad state of affairs that Cincinnati sports is right now, numbers and days and times <laughs> and weeks, they all simply blend together. I mean, it's yeah, it's rough. Matter. Think about it, Matt. They dropped down UC to nine. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is the saddest oh, the Bengals franchise has ever been in my life. Um, and I'm sure it was sadder in the 90s, but at least the economy was good in the 90s. So mm. we had something to look up to. Um, and then you could remember 88. It was just like right then. This is another level of hell. FC Cincinnati is at the bottom of the barrel and Columbus their rival just won the title in an Man, upset. I had, I had a few Columbus friends talking about, oh, the crew texting me. And I'm just, I'm just responding back. We almost had you. We were, it was so close. We would have got you this year if we were in it. The Browns and Steelers look like they're going to both make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and everybody knows that our favorite division rival is the Ravens. Mm. Um, and they fell on their face. So. The Reds, you know, I guess, but it's not close enough to even get close to excited. It's just, we're not even sure when the season's going to start. It's just, this is just, it, it's all blending together. It's all blending together, Matt. Yeah. I Can you remember a worst, a worst time? I mean, the week following the playoff game in 2016, I guess, but. If you're just thinking across all Cincinnati sports in general. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's been a worse time. It, no, it might I mean, be the darkest uh, day. It's, it's pretty bleak. But I mean, if you're thinking <laughs> the 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 night is uh, as darkest just before the dawn, then uh maybe we are <laughs> we are due for we have we we thought we were at rock bottom and we weren't. So now we actually are. And so now we can start to move forward and uh, be on the rise potentially. As the eternal optimist, I, I tend to be. It's that's the thought that always pokes in. Like, you know, the sports gods would have never given you a Super Bowl if Joe Burrow didn't get hurt like this first. Like, it's got to get really bad. You've got to almost quit again. Hold on, <laughs> and then we are only only in the fifth layer of hell. We have to continue <laughs> to move all the way down until we take the elevator back up. Well, like, you know, I've watched Dan Patrick for years and he used to be a hardcore Cincinnati Bengals fan and a Cincinnati sports fan. And he said they, they, they beat it out of him that he's not a fan of sports anymore. He just loves watching sports. He thinks it's great entertainment, loves doing his shows, but he's not a fan of a team. He refuses to sacrifice himself emotionally. Wow. And I could see how a man would get there and, if this, if we don't win a Super Bowl in, with Joe Burrow, I'll get there probably. I'll just that, be like, you know what? Draw. You know what, guys? I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> like, I respect it. those guys like Bengals captain and Bengal Lorian, those guys that are always in the stadium, Matt. Loyal fans. I mean, just like you'll be one of the loyal fans that gets to go to Nippert this weekend. Oh, yeah. I am excited for that. That ordinance was passed to get what, 5,000 fans? In Nippert, it's, I mean, it's not going to be close to the same experience, but I am just excited to be there cheering on site. You might be able to hear me on TV because when there's like only a few fans in the stadium for the NFL games, especially you're hearing someone yelling from the nosebleeds. That's Matt, a terrible call. You got to be like, you got to wait till it's dead silent and go, listen to the 3 a.m. Cody. Just try <laughs> to get it to like ring into the broadcast. <laughs> There we go. We can add that to the to the opener. Yeah, heard on TV. Three a.m. Cody. <laughs> what? It's it's, they're not gonna they're not gonna watch the podcast. They're just gonna be hungry and go to Skyline after that point. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, wow, I could go for a drunk Cody right now. So, what do you think of this committee dropping? Uh, you see, they're down to nine. It, th now, did I tell everybody that they were gonna do this slowly throughout the year? And assuredly, you, you, you already went on your little mini rant. I didn't know if you were going to want to go on another one, but it is 
what we they are who we thought they were. It is as expected. <laughs> I can't believe that they drop. They have continued to drop after not playing, and now they are under three two loss teams. Absurd to me. It's absurd. absurd. Well, the the thing about it is the American Athletic Conference, by many metrics, by many eye tests, they really are a power six. They are yeah. really right there with the power five. And a lot of the American Athletic Conference teams could slot right into the middle of most of these power five conferences. Agreed. They don't have the top line that the power five does. There's no Ohio State. There's no Clemson. There's no Alabama. You know, there's no USC even or UCLA in terms of recruiting base. Cincinnati's better this year, but not traditionally over the years. Right. But they're close enough to be undefeated and ahead of two lost teams because they can compete. Cincinnati would beat Iowa State, I think, on a neutral field. I think Cincinnati would be able to compete against most of this top 10 on a neutral field. I really do. And they talk about eye test and stuff like this. And eye test can't matter that much. It has to be the last of tiebreakers because what sports is about and has always been about and should always be about. It's about winning the game, winning what's in front of you. That's it. It's about winning, winning by whatever margin right? A gold medal is given whether you are by half a second, a tenth a second, or four seconds. You win the gold medal. And college football has refused to exist in this plane of sports that has been set up for centuries since the Romans, right? Started any kind of sport. You played the game. If you won, you're the champion. And college football has decided that they're going to have a league of 130 teams. And for about 80 of them, even if they win every game, they will not be given an opportunity to even challenge for the championship. Yeah. Not even given the opportunity. And everybody is clamoring and, and slamming their fists on the table, Matt, for eight playoff games. Well, here's the truth about that. You will get screwed again because the main argument for doing four playoff teams was so that an undefeated Boise State or an undefeated, remember Utah at the time, or an undefeated Cincinnati was right around there too, that they would be the one to get in the tournament in that fourth spot. That's yeah. why we're expanding the tournament. They did that, lied to your face, and now put that undefeated team at fifth. So when they expand this tournament again, in this past weekend's rankings are a perfect example of it, Guess where the undefeated group of five teams going to end up? Ninth. They yep. will constantly do this because the power five runs the playoff. I mean, it's the most obvious conspiracy I've ever seen in the history of sports. They're not going to let them in. They refuse. It costs them money, right? Just follow the dollar signs, and that's where you'll always find it. Cincinnati will be left out no matter the results uh, over the rest of the year. And I said at the beginning of the year, and if they expanded it to eight, they'd leave them out too. And that, that to me, leaves us an option, and it's only one. See ya, group of five. Go form your own thing. The American, the Sun Belt, the Mountain West, the MAC, and Conference USA should form their own subdivision and have their own national championship. And that would improve all their products, all their recruiting, all their money-making, all their attendance, forget this college football playoff thing because they don't want you there. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be basically be calling that what it is, the Power Five college football playoff. But, I mean, that that is a solution, but I, I feel like the Bearcats can go toe-to-toe for toe, toe to toe with some of these teams. And you have, I mean, you have, you have the obnoxious Buckeye fans coming in there and saying, oh, the Buckeyes would blow them out by 50. But I don't think that's true. And those same fans are still getting upset for Cincinnati saying ninth is still way too low. I, I think that we could beat you. 
but the fact that you are undefeated, like I feel for you, Cincinnati fans. We're, we're getting, I'm getting teams from other fans seeing that online that are just like they have no dog in the race and they're just going, Cincinnati's getting screwed. Like, what, how is this happening? Like, I, I was upset about the, the top 25, and now I have a whole nother ranking system with the college football playoffs to get more upset about the fact that they can go up to five or six, but then be ninth. In the college football, if they expanded it to eight teams and the Bearcats were still left out. And undefeated, yeah. And undefeated. The the only league, you, you said this before, the only league you could win every single game and not be crowned the champion. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a large issue, right? Because it, you should never as a fan in a, in a sport, right? You should never at the beginning of the season not have any sort of hope at all of winning the championship of your sport. Yeah. Right. That's insane. If you don't give people any sort of hope for that at all, right. That's kind of the whole point of sports, right? The chance to win a championship. It, like every high school player across the country, there's a lot of high schools that they're essentially like Cincinnati, right. To where, I mean, they're not like Cincinnati because it's a talent thing. They know they're never going to win a state championship. They don't put it on their goals list. Their fans yeah. don't expect it. Nobody expects it. Why? Because they've only got 150 boys in the school, and they're eventually going to run into somebody who has, you know, five D1 offensive linemen, and that's game, set, match. It's over. But there is still a world, a chance, a way, maybe, if we win every game, we can win this whole thing. There's a movie about it. It's called Hoosiers, right? Would a would an Indiana high school playoff committee have ever put that tiny little high school hickory in a in an Indiana high school basketball playoff? No, because ah, the eye test, they don't pass it, right? And listen, the eye test is a great argument. It's a great way to do rankings on shows like this. It's a great way to talk about sports. It's a great way to bet on sports and make money. But it's not the way that sports standings should be organized because that's not what sports is about. Sports simply is about beating the other team. That's it. Beating the other team on the day you play them. And if you do that every time, you should have an opportunity to compete for a championship. And people are like, oh, my God, but who wants to see a blowout in the playoff? It doesn't matter, right? Well, Why do I mean, we play? Half of the teams in the playoff have been blowouts the past couple of years anyway, and well, they're supposed to be. Exactly. Why do we play the 16-1 game in March Madness? Why do we play when there's a 17-point favorite in the NFL? Why do we play when the Cavs are down 3-1? Why do we play? Why do we play? Why do we play? Why do we play? It's like the most obvious thing in the world. You play because it's possible. You play because only in sports are the results truly never actually determined until you play the game. We have done such a good job as human beings of boiling these football teams down, these group of men to numbers, to a science, right? And we're really good at it. We're really good at predicting. We're really good at knowing who's supposed to be good. But however, in our hubris of being really good at that, we've tried to then control the sport and manufacture the best four teams based yeah. on all our numbers instead of coming up with a system where it rewards winning games. Flat, plain, and simple. You win more games, you make the championship. Who cares about schedule, roadway, home, loss, injured? I don't care, right? There's got to be a win, win, win way to, to make this playoff, not an arbitrary system set up by 13 men who have financial interests tied into the results of the committee. I mean, it's just, that's about Absolutely. all the energy I have for it now, because it's, it's obvious. If you think the committee is looking for fair results, you're silly at this point. Yeah. I mean, from the fans point of view, like we could put together a better list of actual rankings with teams that deserve to be in there. And the majority of what I've seen online, like no one agrees with these rankings and they don't care. Nope. They do they, not they, care. They don't care. They have, and they've done this gradually, right? Remember those first couple of years, they knew how scrutinized those rankings were, right? They knew that they really had to match the public consensus almost. Um, 
but they took a risk here. They dropped number four, Ohio state ended up being a great decision. They won the tournament, right? Remember with Cardell Jones, they took a risk there. They left teams out. They switched them a little bit. And have you noticed year after year, they start to divert from everybody else's rankings and they're starting to yeah. do it their own way so that they can pull any type of crap they want and say, well, it's by our formula. And I just yeah. don't. Our you know, eye test. We decided this team made me more money. I just, you know, I remember back to the BCS days and us saying, man, it sucks that a computer does this. And now all I'm saying is, man, I wish a computer and a predetermined formula did this. Right. Yeah. I feel like I, what I hated about the BCS wasn't the computer point system. What I hated about the BCS is that it was only two teams. And then they got rid of the actual decent thing about the BCS, the point system. And then they made it four teams and it's just yeah. gotten way worse. Cause in the BCS computer point formula, Cincinnati would be what? Fourth, third, yeah. they Four might be even three. second. Yeah. Like it's yeah. seriously. So they yeah. get in and I just wish we'd go back to something that's a little more determinate and the way sports is kind of supposed to be. Yeah. And that makes any kind of fucking sense. I mean, I think we're going to continue talking about this until it's a reality and I don't know when or if that will ever be. Well, no, they're not going to do it. They've got a hold on it. They've got the contract. Yeah. I think they'll they expand it. They'll expand it to eight. Will they actually let people in? I, I don't think so. Maybe it's seven and eight. I, I you could have the Bearcats limp in at seven and eight and win one or two games. I don't or know. I don't think they put them in the whole way. I don't yeah, think they put they them in. in. They get in. I will believe. I will believe out of my body until it happens. So right, I have it. Quick. I I have it in front of it. I actually looked it up. I wanted to see where they would where the BCS. This is yeah. this is what the BCS rankings would be. Okay. So this is the exact formula BCS computer used to use. This would be the BCS score. Number one would be Alabama. Number two would be Notre Dame. Number okay. three would be Ohio State. Number four would be Clemson. Number okay. five would be Texas A and M. And number six would be Cincinnati. And that sounds much better. That, that sounds closer. And Cincinnati would just have to win a couple games down the stretch, um, you know, just to get into the top four. Maybe Texas A&M lose. There's right. a chance that they could make it. And you would understand the chance and the path because it was a computer formula, not some arbitrary number. Like Ohio State hasn't played since what it feels like Thanksgiving. They didn't even play Michigan this year. They don't get moved down. But Cincinnati gets moved down for not playing games. Absurd. Like, it's absurd. absurd. Okay. Well, I gotta, I, we got to move off of this. So we're going to talk about it for another 20 minutes. Well, yeah, Let's I'm just do... trying to make sure we talk about the Bengals as little as possible. Okay. Well, we have <laughs> three minutes to talk about the Bengals. <laughs> exactly. That's what I did. There we you go. I, there I we see, go. I see what you were doing there. Bengals <laughs> and Steelers on Monday night. Let's do Bengals versus Vegas. We have a very close spread of 15 and a half. Points to the Bengals over and under set at uh, 40.5. Which way are you leaning? Over all Steelers points. Over all Steelers? Steelers to cover? Steelers will hit the over by themselves. Wow. Okay. And uh, they'll, they'll win the game, 12 and a half. Um, they'll win 42 to 7. And, and for my are, sake. You're rooting for the Steelers to win. First That's time in my life. So the Bengals will win, probably. That's the way it goes. <laughs> and Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor will keep his job 10 more years because of this win tonight or oh, on Monday. No, no, no. Just well, the, 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 I've got a real problem. I had a 10 and 3 fantasy football season. I've been playing fantasy football for the last eight years of my life. Right. I'm only 22. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I've been the commissioner all eight of those years, right? And now we've grown the league from like three of us playing with seven strangers. Now it's a whole 10 person league. Everybody's active. I've never won the championship. I've been in two championships and lost. I've been in four other semifinals and gotten bounced in those. So six out of eight years, I was in the final four and did not win the title. I was 10 and three this year. I'm in the semifinals and there's only one team that has a player on Monday night. It's my opponent. And it's the Steelers defense. So this is setting up for about the worst Bengals season in history. Oh, it's all coming together. It looks like uh, I need to be about 35 points clear on yeah. Monday night. 
to feel safe. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be up 22 going into Monday oh, night. Oh, that's the number I said last night. Oh, <laughs> man. I was like, I'm gonna be up 22, and then Finley's gonna drop back, throw a ball behind him. Watts gonna scoop and score. That'll be the game. Final score 45 seven. I lose my fantasy matchup by two points, and yep. Zach Taylor becomes up there with like historical figures of most hated humans in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Being this close in fantasy too, and having the Bengals with the ability to ruin it against the Steelers on Monday night is just, that's perfect. Oh, my, I need to be 50. I need to be 50 points clear to feel okay. <laughs> Do you think, all right, what's your Bengals versus Vegas? I mean, that over under at 40.5, I feel like I have to take the over on there. Like even the Bengals, if the Bengals only score 10 points, it's still probably going to go over. They're not going to stop the Steelers. Um, 12 and a half, I don't know. That's, they can still lose by 12. Yeah, it can be considered a blowout at that point, or not necessarily a blowout, but wasn't even close. Um, I'll, I'm going to take the Bengals just to barely cover that maybe lose by 11 or 12. I mean, I theoretically could see the Steelers winning like 19 to three or something like that, I guess, or like 19 to seven. Yeah, sounds like a great game. I cannot wait to watch it. Or like 16 to three. Like, honestly, that's the best you can hope for if you're Zach Taylor. It, it, yeah. Don't even get into your head that the offense is going to move. If the offense moves on Monday night, it'll be an absolute miracle because the Steelers are pissed off too. Like this is, we are about to save the Steelers season, right? We've done this a lot this year, by the way. We've saved a lot of seasons. We got Phillip Rivers back on track. They're about to throw him out of Indianapolis. <laughs> got him back on track. Browns were about to trade Baker, it felt like. He throws five touchdowns. So it's just the every Bengals, time. The Bengals, they're just really nice. They care. It's like the friend that takes care of everyone and then forgets to take care of themselves. Yep. But that's the Bengals. We're just like, hey, you know what? You you go ahead. It will you know, lift you up, and you're doing great now. And then we look at ourselves in the mirror, and we just go, where the where the hell did the last 10 years go? I feel like the Bengals are the most common team on other star players' highlight films. I really yeah. do. Like, I'll watch other great players, and I'm like, man, I've seen the Bengals like three or four times just getting absolutely smoked by this guy. And it's even <laughs> NFC guys. Not tackling. and <laughs> We're all over Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson's tape. We play the Lions once every four years. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Three straight minutes from just the first half of playing the Bengals. Yeah, it's like, and wow, I Barry like had a day. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah, well, well, thankfully, that's all we, we got. We're gonna be, we're gonna be laughing and having this much fun when we're watching the game on Monday night for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I can even see straight by the time the halftime rolls around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. That's the Cody. Bye, guys.